Talk Line Network Radio, America's longest running Jewish broadcast network, the voice of the Jewish community. Welcome to the podcast. And now, you're listening to Talk Line with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. And now, here's your host. Welcome back to the program, Mom Zev Brenner. It's been a while, maybe too long, since we last had former Assemblyman Dov Heiken. He's with Americans Against Anti-Semitism. But he got involved politically again in the race for city council to succeed Chaim Deitch. He backed the Republican candidate, Yuna Vernikov, the whole Jewish establishment, the political establishment, backed her Democratic opponent. Dov, welcome to the program. Congratulations. Did you think your candidate was going to win? Well, we thought there was a real race. The media thought so. Uh, uh, we did not imagine that it would be a landslide. I mean, it was a, that was a surprise. Look, I was at the polls on Tuesday almost all day, three different polls. And what I n- saw happening with the voters, the way they expressed themselves to me, I saw something major was happening here that... You know, people did not want to be told by uh, the Sparta group, by the Flatbush group, uh, or by Yeshiva World, for that matter, uh, who to vote for, who to support. They understood the issues. They knew we had a great candidate in Nina Vernikov, uh, and they uh, they expressed themselves loud and clear uh, in this major victory for Ina. Ina's a uh, someone who's uh, very involved with us in Americans Against Anti-Semitism. She's actually the head of the women's division, and she's a real fighter. I'm, I'm telling you, uh, you're going to have her on your program many times because she's going to be doing stuff. She's going to be speaking out. She's going to be standing up. She's a real fighter, and she will get along with everybody. So this is a major victory for the entire community and way beyond. I mean, uh, I think... Uh, uh, Voters, uh, Democrats in, in including, uh, send a very powerful message. We don't want the radicals of the Democratic Party running the show. That's not what we want. That's not the Democratic Party we signed up for, that we became members of. So uh, nationwide, we saw this. I mean, uh, uh, what happened in Virginia is unbelievable. The fact that there's a close race in New Jersey, I mean, wow. The fact that in Buffalo... The Democratic candidate, who is an avowed socialist, supported by the radicals in the Democratic Party, like AOC and so on, uh, she won the primary, and the former mayor ran as a write-in candidate and won big as the write-in candidate, and the socialist candidate lost. So this is a trend all over America. The question, of course, is, Zev, will the Democratic Party, the leadership of the Democratic Party, really get the message. They have a message today, tomorrow, but will there be excuses uh, in a week, you know, that uh, it wasn't really the radicals, it wasn't really these crazies in the Democratic Party. We'll, we'll find out. Uh, if the Democratic Party doesn't end up getting it and, and, and understanding, uh, they're going to be destroyed next year in the uh, elections. So for me personally, uh Ina Vernikov, I mean, wow, unbelievable. Now, let me ask uh, this question. You yeah. said, but she was running against a moderate Democrat. Steve Saperstein was not a radical Democrat. He had the support of the Jewish establishment, the Flatbush Jewish Community Coalition, the Sephardic groups, the Rabbanim, the rabbis, the Askanim, the activists. So, in fact, you were attacked, I believe, because they said you attacked the Rabbanim in the community for not supporting well, her. Well, let me tell you, uh, Steve Saperstein, when he was asked by the New York Post, uh, who he voted for in 2020. You know, he's not a private citizen. He's running for public office. Refused to answer the question. That's not leadership. When he was asked about charter schools, whether there should be additional charter schools, he refused to answer the question. Now, that one I understand. Because he was supporting the UT, the United Federation of Teachers, that in every single way wants to make sure that private schools, yeshivas, do not receive any aid. But when he was asked the question, he refused to answer the question. By the way, Zev, 
he refused to go on any radio or TV show with Ina. To, I mean, New he York did, he didn't come on, he interviewed listened. Ina. Uh -huh. He refused to go on. He refused to discuss anything. He didn't want to That's, come on this show. We invited him numerous way, times. So. I don't know if he was moderate. I don't know what he was because he never really went public to talk about it. He was afraid to. But did you feel upset when the Rabbanim and some of the Jewish groups that you worked with in the past were angry at you for supporting you and they felt you crossed the line? No, I, not, not at all. You know, I, I didn't feel that way at all. It, to be honest with you, it was irrelevant to me because I felt very, very confident in the people. Uh, a lot of people at the polls have expressed, you know, no one's going to tell us who to vote for. Uh, you know, it's one thing to make a recommendation. That's different. Look, I did that for Ina, okay? But a lot of it was heavy-handed on the part of some of these groups. I mean, the behavior of Yeshiva world was, was a disgrace. I mean, pure, unadulterated hatred. Uh, and I actually, you know, want to thank Yeshiva world because I think that their hatred, their sinaf chinam, uh, actually helped Ina tremendously, so I'm very thankful. So what do they them, what do they do that you that uh, for, you're upset with? Doing what they did. What did they do? Tell our audience exactly what they did in your opinion. Well, well, one of the things they did. I mean, they attacked me viciously. You know, you can criticize me. You know, that's perfectly fine. You know, I've been around a long time. Uh, that's perfectly legitimate. But it was mean spirited. It was hateful. It was deceitful. It was the, filled with lies and dishonesty, uh, uh, you know, about the rabbis and about other things. I mean, anyone who read that and has an open mind and thinks understood that this was a hatchet job. By the way, the person who wrote it, you know, Yeshiva World said at the end, uh, we do not necessarily agree or disagree. But the person who wrote the article doesn't exist. Who no, it, it, was on, it was who under a non-diploma, it was under we, a different can name. Can you get him on your show? <laughs> Do you know who it, it is, though? Uh, and this is typical of Yeshiva World, you know, that they will do things like this. So, I mean, they help the cause. Uh, uh, you know, I think we have to uh, report uh, to Campaign Finance uh, the contribution of Yeshiva World because they were extremely helpful with their hateful mess messaging. Does this mean that Ina Vernikov will not give an interview to Yeshiva World? Oh, I don't look. I don't speak. I don't speak for Ina. And if Yeshiva World uh, called Ina, or oh, by the way, if they called me, you know, they don't call to ask anything. They just do, you know, their nasty stuff. But again, a lot of these articles that are written are written by people who are invisible and don't exist. So they used to have a guy by the mm -hmm. name. Uh, by the way, uh, they used to have a guy by the name of Dove Gordon, who used to write the nastiest things about me. Anything I did, anything I did, they would be nasty. Dove Gordon. Who's Dove Gordon? So why, do you, th so why do you think Yeshiva World has it in for you? This goes beyond oh, Nina. I, I, I have no idea. I mean, I know there's something called Sinatrinam Jelly. I, I don't know. I, I have no idea why they do. Uh, maybe money has something to do with it. Maybe, uh, you know, the highest bidder, you know, I, I don't, I, I really don't know. Maybe you can get uh, the uh, person who's responsible, she will, on your show and talk about it. I have By no way, problem. I'll set up a debate or, be, or discussion between both of you. That. I'd love to, well, we'll try to reach out to them. But let me ask you this question. Traditionally, Orthodox Jews tend to vote more Republican. I think Curtis Liu, of all the neighbors that he carried, was probably Borough Park, if I read the statistics correctly. So why, in the case of city council, to succeed Chaim Deutsch, did all the Jewish establishment, the Orthodox Jewish community, for the most part, support a Democrat over the Republican? What made Manish Tana, what was different about this race where they bucked the way the Orthodox Jewish community has been voting? Yeah. Look, at, Zeb, at the polls... The reason given by people, and I talked to a lot of people uh, at the polls, uh, it was just wonderful being there. It was just special meeting so many people, not, 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 as, not from my old assembly district, because this was a completely different district, but people had all kinds. There were those who said, I'm voting only for Republicans, but that was not the main refrain. People were tired of being told who to vote for. They they got to know Ina 
whether it's to you know meeting her in person, listening to the issues, the fact that her opponent refused to debate and discuss anything. Uh, uh, both of them were invited to a number of shows and uh, only Ina appeared. So I think people, you know, uh, had different reasons for doing what they did. At the end of the day, there is no question that people in our communities are very disappointed with the Democratic Party. And not just, by the way, it's not just the Jewish community. What happened in Virginia, what happened in New Jersey, what happened in uh, uh, in Buffalo, with the radicals lost, uh, it was a lot more than just the Orthodox community. A lot of Americans, just ordinary Americans, are fed up with uh, the defund the police, with these radical positions that are taken uh, 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 by the you know by the radicals in the Democratic Party. They've just had enough, and uh, you know the the Democratic Party just now. And also, look, uh, President Biden. Uh, it's like, I don't know, he's asleep. I don't know where he is. What if he, I don't know if he knows if he's coming or going. Uh, but America is, is showing weakness to the world. I think we all agree that Biden is not exactly... I remember when Biden would, and the Democrats would talk about uh, Donald Trump saying that when they get elected, when they're elected, America will be respected throughout the world. Do you think America's respected right now? Do you think the French respect uh, Biden? Do you think the Chinese, the Russians, and others respect Biden uh, and other countries in in They don't have Western to respect him. They have to Europe. fear him, and they don't fear him. Just they don't the fear opposite. America. Just the opposite. No, they, they don't fear America. By the way, in the case of the local race, we did appeal to Steve Saperstein numerous times to appear. We never got a response. I spoke to him once. He said he would come on, and that was it. Never heard from him again. Which... Seb, Seb, what was he afraid of? I'm not what sure. Was he afraid of? Why wouldn't he talk to you? You're very fair. You give both sides an opportunity. Others uh, in some of your other programs uh, with Jeffrey Lax and and New York One, for God's sake, one. And he would not be interviewed. He would not debate Ina Vernica. You know, uh, Saberstein was a seasoned candidate. This was his third race. He's been around. And I don't know who advised him. Don't talk to anyone. You're running for office. Don't talk to anyone. I mean, is that that's crazy. That's insane. And obviously it didn't work out over here, too. But what what I find intriguing, and this is true of Nassau. Well, Nassau County is different. Nassau County, they had some big Republican wins. Uh, you had Bruce Blakeman, you had Ann Donnelly for district attorney. But in New York, you have a weak Republican Party. And somebody who runs on the Republican line gets virtually no support from the Republican Party. So in the case in Brooklyn here, in the city council seat, so if Ina Vernikov did it pretty much on her own with your support, and others without really any help from the Republican Party, which had you had the Republican Party been more involved in some of these races, I think the outcome would have been even different. Maybe yeah. not in Brooklyn. By the way, uh, I had reached out uh, to get uh, Donald Trump Jr. to uh, to endorse Ina. He ended up doing a robocall, which was amazing. Uh, I don't think he did that for any other candidate, any other local candidate in the United States. You couldn't get Don uh, Trump? But, you well, well you know, I didn't ask for Donald Trump. I asked for Ju Don Jr. And they said yes. They said yes. They know our community. They knew who er uh, Ina was. Uh, the New York Post uh, did a great job in presenting Ina to the public. By the way, the New York Post was the first newspaper that in their headline said that this is a real race, that she has a real shot. And then everyone picked up on it. You know, it, it, you know perception is... Very, very, very important. Look, uh, we had a great candidate. You know, I mean, she's a, she's a real fireball and straightforward and sincere. And uh, I'm, I'm telling you, uh, will make all of us very, 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 very proud. Uh, so, you know, uh, it, it was a great race. We did not expect uh, this, these kind of numbers. Uh, by the way, the other campaign with all their affiliates outspend astronomical numbers but money doesn't buy elections we know that it tell michael bloomberg that tell michael bloomberg that right exactly <laughs> precisely so uh all i can say is uh, uh i am absolutely thrilled i am so proud uh of the amcha 
the Amcha, the people, the average person. Like I said, I spent over 10 hours standing on my feet yesterday and meeting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of people, couples, men, women, older, younger, non-Jews, and pretty much the... Ref so It was a little scary. You know, I didn't want to share it with anyone because as you know, uh, you know, people sometimes say what you want, what you want to hear, and until you count the votes, nothing really matters. Right, they know to the I fat lady sings. Very, things. very good feeling all day yesterday from early, early morning. I I left Woodmere to go to Brooklyn at five o'clock in the morning. Wow. Okay, uh, and it it was uh, it was it was just great being back in the community, meeting so many people. These are people, as I said before, not from my old assembly district. This was all new. And they were warm and delightful and supportive on every single level. So, uh, you know, you know, maybe I'll run for some kind of office. We'll are you going to run off. again, though? Is this the beginning? Uh... I, I Look, uh, by the way, I would never say never, uh, but uh, we shall see. Meanwhile, I am just so excited about Ina Vernica. So let me, and by so, the way, we have other people like uh, Ari Kagan. He also uh, did well. First time uh, person. Uh, the race is very close in that race, but uh, Ari will, I spoke. Uh, Ari's a great guy. Uh, he's been involved with our organization as well. A lot of other good people. Uh, Carmen Yeager and I have talked. Uh, we're going to have an interesting group. By the way, they may be more. They may be more what, though? Which is incredible. I'm sorry, though, but I didn't hear you. There may be more. There may be more. There may be more what? Republican. I spoke at her club many, many times. She won. Uh, uh, this guy Brennan looks like he lost in Brooklyn to a Republican. So on and on and on. It's quite remarkable. Former Senator Dove Hyken is our guest. He endorsed Ina Vernikoff, the Republican candidate. How did you get former Councilman Chaim Deitz to in go against the Democratic candidate and vote uh, and endorse Ina Vernikoff? Well, uh, I want to say thank you to Chaim Deutsch for, for doing what his heart told him to do. He got to know Ina Vernikov, and he really liked her, like, like so many other people in the community. You know, listening to her, you really, she really got into your kishkas, as they say. And uh, Chaim, uh, you know, he knew the scene, he knew what was going on, and he was extremely, extremely helpful uh, he was, uh, Chaim was at the victory party last night and spoke and his whole family, by the way, his whole family, his wife, children, they were all involved on behalf of Ina Vernica. And, and the reason is it's a very simple, I mean, Ina is just a, a, a good person who they all understood and they all saw. You have this beautiful young woman with, uh, a tough and strong and proud to be a Jew, by the way, proud to be a Jew loves America, beautiful story of coming from the Ukraine to the United States, appreciates American democracy, what this country is all about. Doesn't just, uh, you know, uh, say it, you know, uh, because uh, you have to say it. She really feels it. You really, it's straight from the heart and soul. So the whole uh, Deutsch family was involved, including Chaim, uh, and, and, and they made a big difference. Uh, I want you to know that Chaim Deutsch you know, I'm sorry that he's going through difficulty, but Chaim Deutsch was beloved in that community. He's one of the for top 10 years city council plus, members. He, he was... really produced for that community. He did. Uh, uh, constituent services like no one else, like we did when I was in office, being there for people, helping people. That's really what it's all about. No, Chaim Deutsch, as you know, is one of the top 10 city council members. He was great in constituent services. We're coming to the end. Did you know, by the way, you mentioned the robocall that Donald Trump Jr. did for Ina Vernikov. I spoke to Todd Kaminsky, who lost. You know he's related to Mel Brooks. It's his uncle. Mel Brooks did a robocall for him, but obviously Mel Brooks did produce. Look, I live in the five towns, and I'm very much aware of that. But why would he think that Mel Brooks calling me would be of any consequence. Now, if Mel Brooks was, uh, uh, if, if he called uh, to be funny and to make me laugh, that would be good. 
But to tell me to vote for uh, his nephew or whatever, how is that relevant? I mean, that's almost, I find some of that stuff insulting. You know, uh, uh, Mel Brooks is going to call you. Therefore, you vote for Todd. I mean, I, that's, 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 I don't know. Maybe Dove, you're making it sound like it's, you're making it sound like, you're making it sound like it's a joke. Maybe some of the elderly <laughs> Jewish people uh, who even, by the way, most people, by the way, don't even know who Mel Brooks is. <laughs> But I think people in Long Island know, and uh, listen, if Mel Brooks will be on the campaign trail, may have, may, people may have, it may have helped uh, his nephew. Uh, I, I, I think it, it didn't he hurt him. He, sh he should have had Obama call people. <laughs> that would work. Well, we, <laughs> I can imagine you getting a robocall from a Barack Obama. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would be better than Mel Brooks anyway. As we close out, though, you mentioned that you were flirting with going back into politics. So are we, is that something really seriously on your plate to go back into well, the I, election? I, I really don't know. I, I really don't know. But look, everything is politics, Zev. Our whole world is politics. Everything that we do, you know. So I, I don't know, but uh, I, I'm just so excited. About but I, I, I saw, and, you're and it's not like you're flirting with it, though. Do, the people, the people, the Amcha, it was extraordinary. But Dove, it sounds like you're flirting with the idea. It sounds like you're giving some serious thoughts. So that's why I'm picking I'm, up I'm on it. I'm always flirting, don't you know? <laughs> but now we're now we're talking about politics. <laughs> so is by the way, you know, one of the things that uh, uh, the other campaign put out uh, was to try to present as if I was having a relationship. Uh, I with saw that video. Peter where, I don't know if you saw that. I saw that video. I mean, where, it was pretty nasty stuff, you know. I. Uh, but, uh, you know, we laugh and, and, and people are much smarter. You know, people saw this stuff. You know, they accused her of being part of Black Lives Matter that she supports. They put out a video uh, earlier in the campaign and yesterday at four o'clock, they put out the same video. They were so freaking desperate, right? Did, I mean, they, know the, did they know that you were going to lose? Black Lives did, Matter. Did they know I mean, she was gonna, that he was going to lose? Because I, I got the impression they thought that everybody was telling me it's a sure thing. Steve Saperstein is going to win. It's a done deal. I kept hearing that over and over and over again. Right. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, they were supposed to win, uh, you know, based on uh, their own, uh, you know, imaginations, uh, you know, uh, or all the important people, the important people, I don't know what who made them important, but the important people all supported. I mean, and by the way, very strongly, they were determined uh, on behalf of, uh, you know, the Democrat. Uh, but again, as I said, uh, people did not buy it. Things are changing. There's a new mood in the community. Don't tell us, don't dictate to us who to vote for. People are smart. People in our community are intelligent. They can do their own homework. They can look into the candidates and make up their own mind. They don't need the Flatbush organization. They don't need uh, the Sparta group. I mean, it's ins if you really think about it, some of it is insulting to people. Like, here, let me give you a little piece of paper and tell you who to vote for. People, yeah, but they've been listen. But they've done that. You've endorsed candidates, and they're endorsed. What's wrong with endorsing candidates? They went all out. You went all out for for you know. You've went out for other candidates. That's part of the political I, I process. Think, I, I think what the difference to me is the way things were done. It was done in a fashion of uh, how dare you not support. It was done uh, sometimes with threats. Uh, I, I mean, I don't want to were go you, into were stories, you, were you but threatened? we have a were you lot of very good stories. Were you threatened, though? Uh, of, 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 you know, the manipulation of the rabbis was horrible. What, what, do, you mean by the, what do you mean by the manipulation by, of the rabbi? Yeah. Were you threatened? That the, rabbis, that the rabbis keep busy with holy things and not get involved uh, in politics. So were you threatened? Were, were you threatened at all by the by anybody? Did you have any skirmishes with some of the rabbis? Uh, to, to tell us about Sorry? that. Sorry, were you threatened by anyone? Did you have skirmishes with some of the rabbis? No, no. Listen, Zev, you know me. Uh, you can't threaten me. But did they? The question was that I no, know that I, you don't take it people seriously. People but people were threatened. People were threatened. The like whom? Who, who were, was threatened? Were misused throughout the campaign. Uh, 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 there was a lot of, uh, there's no question 
uh, some of these groups are are very powerful. Uh, I'm talking about like the Sparta group. You know, they hand out a lot of money to a lot of places, and and it's one thing to make your recommendation. It's another thing to create an atmosphere that if you don't support who we tell you to support that you're doing something wrong or we're going to uh, penalize you in some fashion. So, though, when you run for office again, are you going to get the support of the FJCC and the Sephardic group? Well, the, uh, the first place I'm going to go to get support <laughs> is from Zeb Brenner. <laughs> but, I'm talking about the sec- I, but I'm talking about the second st- place. And if I don't get your support, <laughs> I'm not running. I'm telling you right now. All right. So, now you, so you're running. What, what, what seat are we looking at? No, no. Listen, I'm... Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm going to enjoy Ina Vernikov's win for quite a while, watching her in the city council. Let's take one step at a time. Let's see. First of all, I heard that Mashiach was coming. Well, with this, with all these Republican I'm electoral you, victories, so he's on his way. Anytime, so I'm not making any plans for running right now. Son, former Simon Dove Heiken, founder of AAA, Americans Against Anti-Semitism. Thank you for joining with us, and very interesting race. And again, congratulations. People didn't think you were able to pull it off in helping Ina Vernikov to victory, but you did, and it happened. So congratulations. Thank you. Th- thanks for having me, Zev. I always uh, love being on your show. And thank you. Regards to Shani. Absolutely. And we're going to be right back. Don't go away. Stay tuned. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Talk Line Radio and TV with Zeb Brenner is just phenomenal. Everybody concerned about the Jewish community should listen and watch. He has the best guests. He asks the most interesting questions. He's always so well prepared. It's talk radio and television from a Jewish point of view at its very best. To advertise on the TalkLine network and TalkLine's email and social media blasts reaching over 70,000 people, please call 212-769-1925, extension 100. That's 212-769-1925, extension 100. Or email info at TalkLineNetwork.com. Thanks for listening. For continuous Jewish programs, TalkLineNetwork.com or our 24-hour-a-day listen line at 641-741-0389. For past shows, you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, YouTube, Instagram, and all major podcast platforms, or jewishpodcast.org. Thanks for listening to the TalkLineNetwork.com. TalkLine Network Radio, America's longest-running Jewish broadcast network, the voice of the Jewish community.